What's up you guys, welcome back to the YouTube Barber Academy. If this is your first time here, I got over 300 videos to help you learn all things barbering, so you might wanna consider listening because the army is growing strong. We're at almost 100,000 and it's all things barbering around the clock here. So with that being said, today's about the hard part, do's and don'ts, and I'm gonna give you five, actually a few more bonuses, five tips to help you get your hard parts to go even harder. Basically, there's two different types of hard parts. One, you cut it all the way up to the line, right? And then you just cut the line. And some clients like this. I'm not knocking anybody for wearing this. That's what some clients want. So if that's what your client wants, do it. Now, the other type of hard part is a little bit more challenging. And that's when you have to leave some weight on that side. And we're going to cut the hard part into the longer hair. So we're also going to cover the regrowth and how to handle that because that's something that I get a lot on the channel. So we're going to talk about that. And with that being said, let's get right started. No, no, not let's get right started. With that being said, let's get started. Okay, you guys can see this guy's got a lot of hair and the first thing we want to do and the first tip we want to talk about is to section and analyze them growth patterns. So I'm looking for the curl, I'm looking for how it's going to lay, I'm looking for where he's receding and I have a blank canvas. I can put this hard part anywhere I want and I think this is a great example because a lot of you guys have asked this question in the comments. So the first thing we're going to do, section him out at the parietal ridge, see that way we get it out of our way and we can avoid cutting it or making any mistakes as we do the fade. Tip number two, now that we've sectioned it, we got it all the way we want it to be. Now I'm gonna wet this down so I got a little bit more control over it and I'm gonna grab a detachable clipper. If you don't know about detachable clippers or you don't know if your machine would be strong enough to get through this type of bulk, check out my barber survival guide where we cover that all in depth and we make sure that not only do you have the right tools but you also have them set up correctly. I'm gonna begin this with a 1.5 detachable blade and as you see, when I come up, I'm creating that weight line. I don't wanna take this too high. I just wanna remove all this bulk so I can see what I'm doing so that I can get into my clipper over comb. We're gonna use clipper over comb to connect the sides to the top. Now, the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to be using a specific comb that I know is about a 1.5 in width. Now, I just finished the best clipper over comb tutorial that I have ever filmed. I think it's my best accomplishment that I have ever made. So I'm gonna link that full video right here. But for now, I'm just gonna say tip this comb out just a little bit, get it on the angle that you want it, cut a tiny bit, and look. And I'm gonna be traveling across the comb very carefully, not bullying the comb, and shaping it the way that I want to. So the next tip that I'm gonna give you guys has to deal with the skin lines. Now, with the skin lines, if you don't know about skin line positioning, what to use, how to do it, and I'd also discuss some of the more advanced techniques that are gonna to lead to better results in the future of your cutting, check out this video about skin line positioning if you haven't already. But in this cut, we're actually gonna be implementing one of them, and that's gonna be the curved guideline. So if you notice, I've created a slight belly on my curve and I've dropped it down in the back and I'm doing that for two reasons. One, he's got blonde hair and blonde hair is gonna be tough enough to do an edge up into. So I wanna make sure that I've left enough hair around the edges so that later I can edge him up and it could look clean. Two, I wanna make sure I've let that fade follow the contour of the head and I wanna make sure that I've created enough space in the back to be able to blend into the crown, which is always a trouble area as we talked about in that video. In addition to the skin line, there is one other little tip that I want to give you is as I get close to that line that I want to put in, I start releasing my pressure and lifting out. So yes, it might seem like I'm putting in a super harsh guideline and in some ways I am, but I am reducing the harshness of the guideline by lifting out slightly as I reach that line as I set it in. This is a great time for you guys to clean up this head, get rid of all the little hairs that are sticking out, those hard ones to reach around the ear, grab your trimmers, clean up his ears, and prepare the canvas properly so we can get into our electric shaver and we don't have to return back to that step. This is it, man. This is the, the king of them all. You gotta keep your guards flat, okay? So when I approach the side of the head, the moment I begin lifting this up or tipping this out, I'm manipulating the distance to the cutting blade. Now, when I do that, I might make a mistake because sometimes you can use this to your advantage, but more often when you're new, it's much better to just hold it flat, use each one of your guards all the way through, and actually use the process. So when you're using your taper blade, there's a little bend in the blade. We covered this pretty good in the fade blade versus taper blade video, but if I'm using a fade blade, it's actually really easy to find where flat is. However, if there is a bend in it, like in this wall half guard, it's shaped like a sled, and you can see there's a little bend in that blade. So flat is not here, it's actually here. 
And that's the place where a lot of people make a mistake. Gamma came up with these new guards. This is the double magnetics. They fit on any wall clipper as well, but it doesn't have a bend in it. It has a nice flat spot. Very easy to locate where flat is, and these things blend together easy. Now, if it just so happens that you're interested in either supporting the channel or you need something from Gamma, do me a favor, use my code Eddie. You'll save 10% off and you'll also help support the channel. But you don't need anything specific. You don't need any special guards. You don't need anything to make this work. Okay, you guys, let's talk about the blend. I wanna make this blend perfect before I get in my hard part. So let me show you how I fade and how I would recommend for you guys to fade. All right, so you guys should be right here. This is your 5-0 line or the line that you cut with your trimmers. But as we get close to it, we wanna start releasing our pressure. And that's why I put these dots here. So I wanna get rid of all this skin all underneath and I wanna start releasing my pressure as I go up. Around the ears, you guys know, I'm a big fan of using that Uno. Use the right tool for the job and it's gonna help it go a lot easier because there's not much space in the sides. So that Uno single foil shaver is gonna be perfect for doing that. Now we got our 5-0 line. That's what this one represents here for five zeros. Underneath, we've skinned it, and before we move on, we need to make sure that there is no line in between skin and our 5-0 line. If that's the case, we're clear to move on to our next step. Next step, open taper. Push the clipper down, put it in the open position, and we're gonna cut another guideline. Again, just like I talked about with my skin line, I want to release pressure as I get to the top, and I wanna soften this line because I wanna begin the blend and save myself time later down the road when we get into the higher steps. So you're gonna see your 5-0 line and your open taper line now. The way that I'm going to blend this out is in reverse. I'm going to begin clicking this one click at a time. You see the first row of dots? That's how high I'm going to go using my crisscross method. Click it again, and now I'm on this row with these dots, staying a little bit lower. Click it again, now I'm on the third row with these dots. Now click it the last time, I'm on my very last setting, my clipper's cutting as close as it could be, and hopefully we watch the Barber Survival Guide so we have it set up properly, so it's gonna remove this last line with ease, and you guys are gonna figure out your blend easy. The next step, I'm going to use a number one open, so this is the number one open, that's what this line represents. So when I put a number one on, I'll put it in the open position, and notice that I did skip the half guard, because the half guard is going to be a step that we're gonna to return to. The reason why I skipped the half guard is because there's overlap between the half and the open taper which also means that if I went straight at this with the half guard, I could wind up taking this fade too high, and I wanna prevent that. I would rather use the one, remove all that I can as far as the line, and any residual, I'll go back in with my half guard, open it, see what effect that has, start stepping down until this line disappears. Now you're gonna see skin to your number one is probably perfect. We began with a 1.5 and we used clipper over comb, so you're more than likely gonna to have to return to your 1.5, and that's what that line represents. We're going to do that lightly, blending it into the top, and we're gonna do the best job we can with our clippers, but our clippers are not going to be the end all be all. We're gonna go back in with some sheer over comb and we're gonna refine this blend. Before I take the top down, I just got this in the mail a few minutes ago. I wanna show you guys something. This, the next tip that I'm going to give you is using the crisscross method. When I am going across the head, trying to work that line up, I like to just use one corner to kind of tap into the danger zone. So it sort of looks like this, where I'm basically trying to find those grain patterns I'm trying to go against the grain and I'm trying to remove that hair, but also I'm giving myself some forgiveness and I'm going to be just using that little corner. That way if I make a mistake using the crisscross pattern, it's gonna be a lot easier to fix when I do that. Now, in this fade, I actually used a taper blade and I'm going to recommend that you guys try to use a taper blade for some of your haircuts because it's got a lot more forgiveness. And if you guys need to learn more about a taper blade versus a fade blade, I got this video right here that'll help break down some of the ins and outs and some of the reasons why you might wanna consider a taper blade over a fade blade. But if you only have money for one, get yourself a fade blade because a fade blade can do it all. Do your best to keep it flat, use your crisscross pattern and we'll get through this hard part and we're gonna make a really nice blend out of this cut or any cut for that matter by following your steps and being thorough. This is one of my favorite things to use. This is a USB charged electric spray bottle and it even shows you what kind of battery you got left. They last forever and they're gonna prevent carpal tunnel because you're not sitting here squirting and squirting like we used to. I just pushed with a button. So I'm gonna push the button, wet the top, we're gonna get some control and we're gonna get into this part of the tutorial. Now that I got the hair wet, I'm gonna begin by cutting the center guideline. That's the Mohawk guideline, and I'm going to cut it straight back throughout the head. We're gonna get into how to cut the top. I'm not gonna show the whole process on this video, but I do have a video right here. I'll link it, how to cut the top 90 degrees. But with that being said, the next tip that I'm going to give you is don't texturize your guidelines. Why would you texturize your guideline that you're trying to follow? 
You can texturize anything you want after your guideline, but don't texturize your actual guideline. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to begin combing the hair around and trying to find that perfect sweet spot that his hair wants to be in and that it looks good. Some people will put this part too low, but the good news is, is you can actually just use water to get control over the hair, comb the hair, and find that spot and double check with the client and make sure that he likes where it's at. Like, I like the spot that I picked. I think it's pretty good. He likes the spot that I picked. Now there's a big advantage to using shear over comb for this is you're cutting the hair without any tension and that's cutting it basically to lay. So you're cutting it into its fall position. Now once I've parted the hair properly and I'm happy with where it's going to be, I've reconfirmed with the client, I'm just going to go in there, I'm going to tap in my line and remember there's two sides to every hard part so I'm going to tap my line into the top and I'm going to tap my line into the bottom. And it's kind of funny, I picked up my gold FX for the first time in a while and believe it or not, you can't even make this up. It completely died the next day and it will not charge or be revived. So I wound up tossing it out. Once that step's complete, I'm gonna go through with the razor and I'm gonna tap both sides of the line, the top and the bottom, trying to keep it straight. Be real careful, use a little shave cream. The next tip that I want to break down to you is something that I know comes up all the time and I want to talk about it real quick. It's going to be how will I deal with this client when it grows back because now I've cut a permanent hard part into long hair so of course a bunch of small hairs are going to pop up as a result. The answer again is your shears. So I'm going to go through, I'm going to cut the hard part, I'm going to do my best to eliminate the little hairs without making that line too wide. It's okay if some of those little hairs that grow back don't get cut to the exact same way. This is probably the freshest it's ever going to look because I cut it into a blank canvas but now when he comes back we're either gonna have to hunt down all them little hairs and make sure that we cut them or you can use this technique do your best to cut it with the trimmers the exact same way we did part it get it nice and set up so you could see all them long hairs and we're going to use the inside of our shears just to go along the ridges of that and cut all them long ones down to a length where they're shorter that way we don't wind up making the hard part way too wide like you could drive a truck through it like it's like a woods trail you don't want that to happen Final tip that I'm going to give you guys before you let any haircut, especially any haircut like this one, walk out the door, blow dry it, man. Blow dry it because when you do that, it's going to lift up, it's going to start activating those curls, it's going to start activating those growth patterns, and it's going to show you any little mistakes that you may have made when the hair was wet. So once I'm satisfied, once I've done all my shear over comb, once I got it laying just right, the next tip that I'm going to give you guys is to go ahead and blow dry it because blow drying is going to unlock a few things. First, it's going to show you how the hair is going to lay all right when it's dry it's going to activate some of those curl patterns some of those growth patterns again so there's simply no way that you can let this guy walk out with his hair wet or just throw some gel in it and just tell him to go you need to blow dry it and reanalyze everything that you did and you're going to make some small corrections every time you blow dry i promise you and you're going to be able to get your fades airtight by doing this especially into these longer lengths so i'm going to go through now i can break it up now i can throw in some more texture if i see that it's necessary i can redo some of my shear over comb work to try to get that to lay a little bit better and i can adjust it so that i can get the best cut i possibly can and uh, this guy can then get some product and then I could send and pack it. All right, you guys, if you guys learned something out of this video, if you like the video, if you like the haircut, man, do me a favor, drop a comment, Eddie's Army, down below, and let me know if I did a good job. With that being said, man, Eddie's Army is growing strong. We're almost at 100,000, and if you guys want a list, all you got to do is hit that subscribe button. It's totally free, man, and I hope you guys are following along throughout my phases. We are currently working on phase three, so phase one, phase two is done, phase three is in the works, and I'm going to get these videos to you as soon as possible and I think it's going to revolutionize the way people are learning how to become a barber and I think if you make it through the six phases you do the homework you do the recommended practice you guys are really going to grow into some really good barbers man so with that being said we're going to head over to phase three right now and I'll catch you guys over there peace